focus on a couple of numbers that were good, actually. Good rich consumer, well, the quarter four numbers look good. It was aided by lower material costs, as well as, uh, you know, you had EBITDA margins that surged closer on 400 basis points. The domestic branded volume, that also came in higher in double digits. Mr. Samir Shah, the CFO of the company, joins us to talk about the past quarter's numbers. Morning, uh, Samir, thanks so much for joining in. Well, uh, how has the consumer sentiment been after March? Do you think the momentum that you gained in the fourth quarter will sustain throughout the year? It looks like, I mean, the overall consumer uh, sentiment was relatively better as compared to what we have seen over the past few quarters. We did call out uh, earlier that uh, one of the major reasons for weak consumer sentiment was inflation, and now inflation is receding in some of the staples within FMCG category. And we are seeing those uh, price drops, which in turn is also now propelling growth, so at least in those categories. Uh, so yeah, I mean, consumer sentiment seems to be, you know, kind of uh, gradually improving. Uh, Samir, so should we assume that it is a double-digit growth year for India uh, this year, FI24? Yeah, so directionally, we had called out, I mean, long-term, we would want, I mean, our growth to be double digits. Uh, definitely, we'll continue the momentum which we have seen in our business, not just last quarter, honestly, but for last now couple of quarters. So I think at global level to begin with, we should be seeing at least a high single-digit, uh, you know, volumes growth. Uh, which is, I mean, you know, a good place to be in. Uh, Samir, how about the Indonesian business? Uh, is it on the path of recovery? Uh, how long before it completely normalizes, goes back to mid-teens run rate? Even in Indonesia, in the last quarter, we have seen a gradual recovery. I mean, if you double-click into the performance, we did see uh, high single-digit uh, overall growth uh, in Indonesia. The margins were also flattish. Uh, all the input metrics are in place. Whatever was the uh, cleanup, so-called, is also you know done with. Uh, so we do expect, I mean, Indonesia to see, I mean, much improved performance uh, this year, both in terms of volumes, in terms of category-driven, distribution-led overall growth, uh, as well as margins. Samir, what size has the Magic Wash Liquid Soap brand become for you? And if you could give us a rough expectation in terms of growth from year on. I think it should be close to around mid-single digits uh, thereabout in terms of uh, size of the overall uh, Magic brand. Magic, I mean, is now you know, very dominant in terms of powder to liquid, um, you know, hand wash uh, offering. Uh, we have a meaningful share over there. Okay. Um, so, Samir, what about the uh, new 15 rupee hair color that you have launched in the southern markets? Uh, by when do you plan to launch it across the country? And uh, what are your expectations in terms of volumes? How do you expect the product to really do? So, we will see. I mean, uh, this also getting scaled up to uh, across all the markets beyond south very soon. I mean, the hope is the kind of success which we saw with creme at 15 rupee is what we're expecting from selfie at 15 rupee. I mean, shampoo or color is a very, very convenient format, I mean, for Indian consumers. So, we do expect uh, with this disruption and also with this price point, which is honestly at powder's price point, uh, this uh, product also to fly through the roof. Samir, so, what is the sustainable uh, target in the household insecticides business? By how much has the category penetration level increased? So, you know, the last quarter has been quite pleasing in terms of household insecticides performance across all the categories. And all the categories have grown in double digits, but we are pretty pleased with household insecticides performance in specific. But the volumes also have been in double digits. So a lot of input metrics have been in place over the last couple of quarters. It's not like all those input metrics only came in in last quarter and the performance was stellar in last quarter. So we do expect, I mean, some of this input metrics to continue this uh, growth momentum in FY24. So again, in FY24, we do expect, I mean, steady state and uh, much better than at least uh, recent past year's performance, largely driven by all the input metrics, uh, which have been in place, uh, at least from our end over the last uh, two, three quarters. All right, Samir, would you have a sense of how the overall penetration in portfolio has increased in the last one year or so? Yeah, I think if you look at uh, household insecticide category to begin with, my senses are uh, penetration would have moved up by around 150 to 200 basis points uh, in formats like, say, creme in a 
sashi and the penetration increase was as high as 300 to 400 basis points so a lot of category development initiatives which we had called out especially in under penetrated categories or formats uh, are seeing you know increase in category penetration for us or format penetration and in turn also seeing the overall growth uptake as we are seeing in our results eventually um, Samir, uh, on Africa, of course, there have been some problems with the currency and uh, macros in Nigeria. So how does that market look uh, to you now? And overall, I mean, what's the picture in Africa now? Yeah. No, Africa business for us over the last, I think, 10, 11 quarters has been a double-digit uh, growth business. Last quarter did see a little bit of pause in momentum, all because of adverse macros in Nigeria. We had election, we also had demonetization over there. Um, that did, you know, impact the March performance, but uh, it's back to normal. I mean, as we speak, so we did see a very smart recovery late March and April, uh, even early May has been, you know, as what a normal month would be. So it's behind us, but yeah, there was a bit of disruption for three, four weeks, which did impact this double-digit growth momentum. But we should be back on double-digit growth momentum starting this year again. Okay. Uh, Samir, what kind of growth are you penciling in on your uh, gross margins and how much of that would be allocated to ad spends? Uh, as a result, what would uh, your EBITDA margin targets look like? Yeah, it's difficult to give a guidance on that because there are too many variables, mix as well as inputs as to how they will shape up. But what I can share is the quality of profits will be excellent. I mean, we do expect gross margin expansion in FY24 over FY23. The latter part of FY23 did see a gross margin expansion. Uh, but we will continue to see gross margin expansion throughout FY24. We will continue again with category development initiatives and hence higher uh, working media, media investments, which again, I mean, are seeing results now in terms of the kind of volumes growth which we have seen um, in India, say, in last uh, quarter. We will see uh, what we call as basket of controllable cost reduction. Again, we saw, I think, close to 200 bips of reduction in controllable cost uh, in FY23, and we will see uh, meaningful reduction again in FY24. I think combination of all of this should result in EBITDA margin expansion um, in FY24. So the game plan is to kind of get to close to say high single digit volumes growth, uh, meaningful expansion in overall profitability in FY24. All right, uh, Samir, as far as the Park Avenue acquisition is concerned, now your distribution is nearly four times theirs. Should we look at sales moving in a linear fashion from year on? Yeah, no, I think the distribution synergies will get played out, I think maybe in next 90 to 100 and, you know, kind of 50 odd days, you know, time period, there'll be synergies both the ways, but the bigger synergy will be for the Park Avenue and Kamasutra brands, uh, because their distribution is less than 0.25x of GCPL's distribution. And of course, GCPL will also be able to leverage on the chemist uh, network, especially which both the brands uh, do enjoy. So we definitely do see a very meaningful distribution synergies. And also, by the way, there is equally meaningful cost synergies. But as we had called out, uh, I mean, post acquisition, that maybe we take first six months as is, uh, and then we see, you know, both distribution synergies as well as cost synergies and eventually into the overall performance, uh, which my senses will pan out, I mean, in second half of the year, because first three, six months, we just want to absorb it, just have our own internal you know, kind of plans in place and then see all the synergies getting played out in terms of end results, which I think will start from second half of the year. Okay, uh, Samir, 20% uh, plus margin in that business, that comes uh, on the back of uh, three acquisitions that you've done, right? FI25, so we had said one year, I mean, we will have more of the same in terms of margins, that one year is going to be FI24, and FI25, we'll see mid-20 uh, margins is what we had guided earlier. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Asamir, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Good luck, good speaking with you here on CNBC TV 18 this morning.